We're going to have a visitor in this one. This is Tara with A Loop for A Loop. Thanks for coming to hang out with me in what is going to be essentially for a knitter, like a look inside my underwear drawer. Because we're going to review my stash. It's been three months since I uploaded my first Knit Simply video and I wanted to do them quarterly just as a way to keep myself accountable for what I'm taking in and producing. And what better way to hold yourself accountable than to put it out for all of the universe on YouTube to see. So we are going to look through what I also showed in the first video and see how things have changed. If that yarn that I had in the first video does not make an appearance in this video, it's because I have used it up in a project or it is currently being used in a project. And so let's just, let's dive in. So I had this big tote in the first video. You can see the top of it here. And this time I don't need to open up and go into it because there's no yarn in here anymore. This is all now fabric and kind of other bits and bobs for like sewing projects and making animals like stuffies. So all the yarn that was in here, I actually used as stuffing for pillows. So for the pillow that I made for my parents and for my brother. And then I also made a pillow for myself um, for one of the chairs that was just really uncomfortable. Um, I just used that yarn that I didn't really want to knit with, but I wanted to be thoughtful about how I used it. Uh, I used it as pillow stuffing. That took care of that problem for me. Um, in here, the only, I have like some finished object stuff that I need to get mailed out and I have one whip. So there's not really any stash yarn in here. That's good too. So basically that means we're looking at my side table and I do have a box as well that has some yarn. We'll get into the box last. So in the first video, we talked about how this bottom drawer doesn't have any yarn in it and it still does not, but this top drawer does now have some yarn in it. So what I did is the baby yarn that I had in a bag is now up here. So I have, oh, my hair, sorry about that. Um, so I have my baby yarn and then everything else in here is all scraps. So um, this was a scrap from a hat, this is a scrap from this hat, what I need to do is weigh this out and see how much I have to figure out how I can use it. That's just too much to let go. Um, here's another of the baby, or actually I use these two to make a hat for my son and there's plenty here to still do some more. I can't believe how much is left over from that hat. So this is like my blue and cream drawer. Here's leftovers. What is this? Oh, that's a bag. <laughs> and these are leftovers from my sweater that I can still, there's lots here to knit from. So those are all leftovers and a quite substantial amount of leftovers. And they're all, they're all blues and various like creams and ivories. So I, I could probably get creative with that. Hmm. They would look cute caked up and then like hung on the wall like with a pegboard. That'd be cute. Okay. Okay, and then the middle drawer still has leftovers. So like, 
I'm not sure why this isn't in a bag. So I have, ooh, I have a glare here. Is that better? Can you see better? These are all cool toned colors. So my teal needs to go in here. And like I said, these are all leftovers. So this is my cool tone bag. Not to be confused with, oh, my warmer toned bag. Well, it's got some greens in there, but just pretend. I couldn't get the greens in here. So these are all leftovers. So I need to find a scrappy project for that. I did go on Ravelry and favorited quite a bit of Stephen West patterns. I didn't purchase any. I just put them in my favorites to go back and look at because his projects, since they're so colorful, they open themselves up to your stash of leftovers. And these are somewhat new. I had used these to make my daughter's mittens and there's a whole bunch left. So this is a tangled mess. Oh my gosh. Okay. So my leftovers are obviously a hodgepodge of everything. These two are yarn B color idol and they're as close to neon as I could get in a big box store. Um, I'm thinking, is there enough contrast to do so the designer of the underwing mitts, and I, I didn't look up her name, but she also has a pattern of fingerless mitts, but it's for the elephants. And I kind of think this would be cute to do that with, but that's for another day and another time. I've got plenty of things to keep me occupied. Oh dear. Okay. All right. We will go with, let's just do it, top drawer. Here we go. I'm going to pull the bags out and then put them back in. So in the purple bag, I still have <laughs> my two skeins of Ferris wheel in pink marmalade. And I've partnered them up with the yarn bee. Look at this. Look at this mess. This is, that's one reason why I won't buy this yarn again, because it comes in like this onion shape and it just comes apart. And I just think, why would you, why would you do this then? <laughs> this yarn, I'm wondering if this falls apart like this is because since it's no pill, it has some slip to it. So the fibers can't grip onto each other. And so it just ends up slipping off of each other. Cause if you notice, this has stayed in a cake just fine because there's some fuzz and some grip to it anyway. I digress. Apparently I'm also knitting my hair, but I'm going to put these two together in a future project. Color work, obviously. I like color work. I am drawn to color work that is slightly monotone and not really a crazy high contrast. I like things to kind of just melt together. That's what I'm drawn to, which sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. So, I mean, I know enough about color theory to help me make my choices, but sometimes a girl just wants to play and sometimes it works out and sometimes I have to rip it out and completely start over. So mm, there's that. Okay, now this is new. I had seen this yarn at Hobby Lobby and I was drawn to the colors in it. It is made out of a cotton. Let me look. It's 90% cotton, 10% polyester. And it is the yarn B. I just, is it because my face is in there? Can you see it now? I think it's called Rapology. 
and this is an April bouquet. So I think this would be perfect to cast on in April. And I have an idea that this is what I want to knit my, um, is it called Lilum? Lilum? Lilium? It's a fingering weight tee by Pip and Pin. And so, like I've said before, it's either going to turn out great or it's not. <laughs> Knitting is the most rebellious act I do. Like, I am typically a rule follower. I, you know, I'm a good little girl and I follow your rules and I want to do everything that you need me to do because I don't, I want you to be happy and everything like that. But then when it comes to knitting, once I've, when I'm learning something new, I follow everything exactly however it's being taught or I'm, as I'm reading it or watching it on a video. Um, but once I kind of get the main idea, then I kind of just throw the rules. I don't throw them out, but I set the rules to the side and I play around with bending and breaking the rules. So like that's either going to work out great or it's not. And if it doesn't, then I'll take it out and make something else out of it. It's cotton. I could just make washcloths. I can make a lot of washcloths out of that. Um, okay. Wow. This one's, this one's full. Okay. Well, this has three bags in it. That's why. Oh dear. Okay, let's do the pink one since it was in the back. This is still filled with the Knit Picks Aloft in Celestial it's Mohair. And I still have all these Wonder Balls in here. I feel like this yarn has haunted me since the beginning of last year. So the beginning of 2020 because I used this Starry Night Fade from Cornbread and Honey to make Melanie Berg's on the spice market and there's so much yarn left over and I need to use it and I need to practice knitting with mohair. I need to just, I, this needs to be like a cast on soon because I've had this the longest. I think I've had, I've had that yarn the longest so I need to use it. Make myself a starry night sweater. Okay. In this bag, I have my, oh, heavens. These are my leftovers that I still have from my triangles half and half wrap. My half and half triangles wrap. I think it's half and half triangles wrap. So I still have these colors left over and I have yarn now for my second one. So this will be the second one in episode five of my podcast. I talked about the color inspiration for this is um, Moira Shear in the red shoes that came out late 40s early 50s thanks i think maybe early 50s it came out but she has a pink dress red shoes so my son is calling my name again so you know how the grocery girls have georgia we're podcasting i should do samuel i'm podcasting i'm just kidding back to our regularly scheduled programming i think sam's gonna turn into a cheerio Okay, so then in this last bag, it is just full of Rowan Cla Alpaca Classic, and I think this is their satin colorway. This is like my all-time favorite, just all-time favorite. So it is a nude pink. It has some nice fuzz. It's very warm, and this is like my dream yarn. So, we gotta get this back in this 
basket. Samuel! Okay. He got his Cheerios, but nothing compares to having mama with you, so I guess. I'm gonna leave this bag out, so then I make sure that I use it. So I'm just gonna toss it in this basket where it's obnoxiously in the way and doesn't fit in there nicely, and that'll drive me nuts enough to use it. So then I have the box, and in the box, I have yarn for two projects. So, I have yarn. Oh, this is awkward to hold. Okay. So, I have three skeins of fingering weight. What are you doing? I'm showing yarn. You want to watch? Yeah. Okay. So, three skeins of fingering weight and then um, white mohair. This will be for my Swan Lake sweater I'm dreaming of. Okay. Okay. Well, now we have a live audience in the studio. Okay. And then on the bottom, this is Patton's Croy that I got on sale at Michael's. And this I'm going to make a second reluctant homeschooler. So those are projects that have already been planned, determined. Samuel, has mommy done a good job with her yarn? Say good job, mama. Can you say good job? I'm not doing a good job closing this box. There we go. So two sweaters in here and when I looked back at my patterns, I have, I did, I went back and kind of wrote some things down. Since December, I've only purchased three patterns. I purchased two sweater patterns and the gingerbread man pattern to make the doll. So I purchased the reluctant homeschooler, which I've already knit. And I have purchased pink fizz, which I'm going to use my Rowan yarn for. So, oh, well, excuse me. Can I have that back? Thank you. No touching. Thanks. Yeah, good job. So, no. that's not bad. Any other patterns that I would have used that would have been considered new were new and like 95 to 100% from Pearl Soho because they have my favorite simple kind of classic patterns. So that's it. That wasn't too bad. There wasn't any dirty laundry in there, except for maybe this, that I just need to cast on and just make it. I need to just make things. Oh, okay, well, it's time to go play. I'm never, I'm never not where he is. Oh, look at that. Um, uh-uh, no touching. No, thank you. I'm never, I'm never not where he is. So even when I come in here behind my camera set up here is the table where I sew. And at nap time, I put our youngest in her crib, which is just right. Like her bedroom is right by our bedroom. And then I'll come in here and sew and Sam always comes in with me. He kindly unmakes our bed for us. So we're gonna go play. We're working on potty training right now. So that, I mean, we're full of adventure right now. So that's all I have. It's March, April, May. We'll do this again in June. And see how I've done. I would. Oh, okay. Ha! Oh, bye. <laughs> Didn't quite make it under the camera, but that's okay. <laughs> Mommy, what I, <laughs> Hi. Now you all know. Ha! Hi, that's Sam. That's what. That's the one that makes all the glorious background noise. Can you say bye? No, bye. No, bye. You say, bye. bye.
样的